Hi, I'm Marge. Welcome to worship. Rise up, rise up, rise up, O oh my soul. Rise up and sing this blessing to God's name. Rise up, rise up, rise up, O oh my soul. Rise up and sing this blessing to God's name. Good morning, everyone. Reverend Cole here from Selkirk United Church, and I'd like to welcome you to our online service for February 7th, 2021. It is the fifth Sunday in the season of Epiphany, the season of light. I'm glad that you've joined us for worship today. Our Selkirk United Church is an inclusive, affirming, and welcoming community of faith, seeking God's guidance in helping us become the people we were created to be. This morning, we also recognize that we worship on Treaty One land within the homeland of the Métis Nation. We begin our services by lighting the Christ candle to remind us of the gift of Jesus Christ, the light of the world, and by lighting the rainbow candle, symbolizing that all are welcome. Our first hymn this morning is number 154 in More Voices, Deep in Our Hearts. Let's sing it together. Let's bow our heads for an opening prayer. Let us pray. We are here, O God, 
to engage in this time of worship. Show us, God, where we should go, what we should do, how we should act, and where we can be a living presence for others. Open up to us, loving God, all that life offers, and encourage us to share all that we can for the well-being of the world and all who live within it. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. For announcements today, a few future dates to make note of. Next Sunday, February 14th, we will be celebrating the Sacrament of Communion. Our youth group is planning a service again this year. We're excited about that. They are aiming for March the 7th, so make sure you mark that one on your calendar. And our annual meeting will be in a couple of weeks, February 21st. We will have a brief worship service followed by our live annual meeting on Zoom. We do need to know who will be attending the meeting so that we can send out invitations to join the Zoom gathering. So if you plan to attend our annual meeting on the 21st of February, make sure you let us know in advance of that meeting, well in advance. Probably the best way to let us know is to email Chris. Her email is chris at selkirkunitedchurch.ca. We are still looking for some volunteers to deliver Meals on Wheels. Selkirk United is on the schedule for the month of March, and we need nine teams to share the load. Volunteers are needed by February 15th for our delivery month of March. If you have a bad memory but would like to help, you might want to push pause right now, write that down, and make sure you email Chris right away to let her know that you're willing and able to help. Thanks for that. Our online discussion group, SAC Religion, continues this week on Tuesday afternoon at 1 p.m. Again, that's a Zoom gathering, so send me a note if you'd like to join us, and I'll send you an invitation for the Zoom gathering. We do have one really great celebration to share this week. You may remember that I hinted at it last week. We have a centenarian to celebrate. Jean Gunter will be turning 100 years old on February 9th. That's this coming Tuesday. So a very happy, happy, happy birthday to Jean. Congratulations from your whole church family here at Selkirk United. We hope you have a wonderful day and God bless you as you celebrate this week. I also mentioned last week that we are starting a new February prayer list today. So if you have names that you'd like to, us to include in our pastoral prayers, please send them in to Chris or myself and we'll be sure to include them for next week's service. I think that's all I have for today. If you have announcements or celebrations that you'd like to share with the congregation, just send them in by Thursday at noon each week to make sure we get them in time for recording. We are going to have a blessing for the prayer shawls today. Many of our knitters have been busy over the past while and we have some new prayer shawls to bless. Of course, that means that we have lots of shawls for anyone who needs one. If you know of someone who could use a prayer shawl, someone who is going through a difficult time, perhaps struggling with a loss, please let us know. and We'll find a way for you to pick one up at the church and get it to those who need it. So let's bow our heads now as I offer a blessing on the shawls. Let us pray. God of creation, God of redemption, God of sustaining grace, we praise you for the opportunity to take part in this prayer shawl ministry so that we might see a world beyond ours. We thank you for putting those in need on our hearts and in our minds so that we might fully live out your call to love and to serve. We ask that you bless these shawls and those who will receive them. May they feel the love, the comfort, and the peace of your presence. And may your light shine in them and be a beacon of the hope that is promised to us all. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. And now our children's time is a video. It's a children's story written by Susan Verdi, and it is called I Am Peace. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Susan Verde, and today I'm going to read the book I Am Peace, written by me and illustrated by Peter H. Reynolds. There are times when I worry about what might happen next and what happened before. 
The thoughts in my head are like rushing water, and I feel like a boat with no anchor, being carried away. I give myself a moment, I take a breath, and then I tell myself it's all right. I feel the ground beneath my feet and steady myself. And start to notice the here and the now. My thoughts begin to settle. My mind begins to clear. I am peace. I can watch my worries gently pop and disappear. I let things go. I can say what I feel inside out loud. I know myself. I can share kindness with others. I make a difference. Oh, and look what happened. The seeds drop. And all of a sudden, something starts to grow. I can hug a tree and thank it for its beauty and strength. I connect to nature. I can watch the clouds make shapes against the sky. I know wonder. I can taste and smell and touch and hear and see what is all around me. I use my senses. I can feel my breath fill my whole body. I tune into me. Now the water is still. I have found my anchor and everything is all right. I don't need to worry about before or after. I am in this moment. I am peace. Now I share my peace with others and hope that it is carried away to those who need it. And I dream we are peace. And that is the end. Thank you. I can feel you near me, God, I can feel you near. Yes, I know you're with me, God, I feel you here. I can feel you near me, God, I can feel you near. Yes, I know you're with me, God, heaven is here. And I'll jump for joy, I'm singing alleluia. Jump for joy for you. I will jump for joy, I'm singing alleluia, jump for joy for you. First reading today is from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 to 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? God is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. God does not faint or grow weary. God's understanding is unsearchable. God gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for God shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with the wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Our New Testament reading is from Mark chapter 1, verses 29 to 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out into the deserted place, and there he prayed, and Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came here to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. 
through these words of scripture. May the Spirit guide us. The sermon title today seems to be at odds with the two readings from scripture that we just heard. The title, in case you missed it, is There is no hope for me. Yet both of our readings this morning are very hopeful readings. In the story from Mark, Jesus is healing people and spreading the good news about God in Capernaum, and he's heading off to spread more good news and heal more people in more places throughout Galilee. In Isaiah, we have a very hopeful passage that God gives us strength when we are weak. Verse 31 says it so powerfully, but those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall rise up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Very hopeful words. So why the gloomy sermon title? Well, first of all, I wanted to acknowledge that that's the way a lot of people are feeling these days. There is a lot of hopelessness in the world right now. That's just the reality. But I also borrowed that line from the same prophet Isaiah who is giving us hope in today's reading. In an earlier part of the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, the same prophet says that exact phrase, there is no hope for me. He goes on to say, I am doomed. In that passage, when Isaiah is feeling at his lowest point, God transforms him in a powerful, life-changing moment. And just a few verses later in, in chapter 6, Isaiah has gone from hopeless to ready to serve. And when God asks, who will go and act on God's behalf in the world? Isaiah says, I will go, send me. That's a pretty quick turnaround. I don't suppose it happens that way for most of us. But there are certainly plenty of stories in scripture that tell of transformations, that turn people around and set them on a different path, God's path. Stories that take people from lives of hopelessness and fear and offer them lives of joy and hope, lives that have meaning and worth. I could preach a whole series of sermons with examples from scripture where God changes the story for people, giving them hope when there seems to be none, giving them a future full of promise when they've all but given up. But instead this morning, I thought I would share a story that's a little more current. As I thought about this theme this week, one person's story kept coming to mind. It's a story that was shared at one of our conference annual meetings about a decade ago now. Our guest speaker that year was Sherry DeNovo. Some of you might recognize that name. Sherry was, up until recently, a politician, of all things, from Toronto, of all places. Hope that can come from a politician from Toronto, that sounds doubtful, doesn't it? Sherry was a member of the Ontario Provincial Parliament from 2006 until 2016. And she is also a United Church minister. She was in ministry before going into politics, and now she has returned to ministry and serves a congregation in Toronto, Trinity, St. Paul's United Church, and Centre for Faith, Justice, and the Arts. When Sherry spoke to us at conference, it was also a time when things seemed in many ways hopeless for our church and our society. Everything seemed headed in the wrong direction, and a lot of people were on the verge of giving up. But through the telling of her story, Sherry helped us to see that there is reason to hope, both in our church settings and even in terms of our world and society. Not in a naive, head-in-the-sand kind of way, but finding, even in the struggles, the moments of hope that God sends to us to keep us going, to keep us fighting for right, to keep us working at seeking out God's plan for us and for our lives. She was a very inspiring speaker and a very good storyteller. I particularly found hope in one of the stories she told about herself. She seemed like such a confident, well-spoken, got-it-all-together kind of person, a real leader. I presumed that she had been groomed for that from an early age, you know, grew up in the right kind of family, had all the advantages and so on. But that was not an accurate assumption, hardly. We were surprised to hear that at the age of 16 years old, she was living on the street, was involved in drugs, no longer welcome at home. 
as Sherry climbed up and out of that lifestyle, she began to make a very good life for herself. It didn't happen all at once, of course, but over time she went back to school, to university, graduated, had a great but short career in business, married, had children, and was living the good life. As she described it, she said, I had a nice big house, 3,000 square feet, I had the swimming pool, I had the Mercedes in the driveway, but I didn't really have anything. I didn't have God in my life, and I didn't have hope in my life. My whole life was centered around success at work, and that would change daily. If the money numbers were good one day, I was happy. If they were bad the next day, I was miserable. That's no way to live. It has to be about more than that. And then, she said, one day, the family was driving down some street in Richmond, B.C., where they lived at the time, and their son looked up and saw a neon cross on the side of a Pentecostal church and asked them, what is that lighted T for up there? <laughs> Sherry said that she and her husband looked at each other and knew right then that they were failing miserably as parents. He was a lapsed Catholic and she was an atheist, but they decided to go to church. And they happened to choose Richmond Hill United Church and they were by no means the greatest church members or even real believers, but they started going for the sake of the children, you know. And for Sherry, it was the beginning of a tremendous change in her. She became, over time, not just a believer, but she felt called to do more and more until it led all the way to feeling called into the ministry of our United Church of Canada. And she was eventually ordained in 1992, the same year I was, by the way. That's quite a journey in itself, especially when she put it this way. She said, before making that decision to go to church, I said to my husband, you know, I don't really believe in God, but I do believe that Jesus was the Son of God. Think about that one for a while. And then her husband told her, you know, I don't really even believe in God either, but I do believe that Mary was God's mother. Sherry laughed at the absurdity of those two comments and remarked that even though they were nonsensical and showed how utterly out of touch they both were with faith and reason, she thought that it was actually a hopeful sign that they at least shared something in common in that moment, ridiculous as it may have seemed. Anyway, from that moment to becoming a minister was quite a journey indeed. Sherry, in her life as a minister, has been described as a progressive, social justice-oriented minister who has championed the rights of marginalized groups, including women, the poor, and those living on the street, and has drawn them into the mainstream of Christian life. She has also hosted a radio show slash podcast over the years called The Radical Reverend. When you think of Sherry's journey from living on the street at 16, sleeping on the street, to becoming a United Church minister, you might compare her to Isaiah, who went so quickly from saying that there was no hope for him at all, to being a leader and becoming one of the great prophets of the Bible, one of the great prophets of our faith who has given hope to so many. Now listen to this next twist if you want to hear a story of hope. After a number of years in the ministry, Sherry felt called to do more, yet more, or at least to do things in a different way, to make changes in the political realm rather than just in the spiritual realm. And she did that, entering politics and becoming a leader, one of the first female members of the Ontario Legislative Assembly to crack through the old boys club and rise up to an executive position within her party. But she believes that part of her story is a true miracle story and that it contains a true sign from God. She said that her very first day in her new office after being elected, she looked out her office window and realized that she was looking down on the very street that she herself used to, as a homeless drug-involved teenager, used to sleep on. Now here she was, a member of that province's government. 
she believes that that's the work of a transformative God who walks with us through all of life, giving us hope, giving us the power to rise up and change ourselves and others if we watch for the signs and if we follow our God-given path boldly. There's more to her story yet. Sherry performed Canada's first legalized same-sex marriage, and in her time as a member of provincial parliament in Ontario, she passed into law more pro-LGBTQ legislation than anyone in Canadian history. Sherry later went on to introduce a bill to increase minimum wage in Ontario, which meant that a million Ontarians received a 28% raise, and many of those were able to climb above the poverty line for the first time. So much of Sherry's story inspired me, and it has stayed with me through the years since she shared it with us. As I reflected on her story this past week, one of the things that kept coming back was how much our church has benefited from being open to someone with that kind of story, and how glad I am that our church is known for being open to people from so many different places along their journey of faith. Both Sherry and her husband had those two very different, very strange ideas about God, and these were well-educated people, just not church people at the time. They had not done any kind of reflection on whether their beliefs made sense or whether their lack of belief made sense. They were just two regular people who had no idea what they believed, but there was a desire to make a connection with God and with others, and they did that. They found a united church that, opened the, that, that welcomed them with open arms. That's a few years ago, of course, but those people, those kinds of people are still out there. They're all over the place and they may not be sure what they believe exactly. And they have no idea what this United Church is all about, perhaps, or whether church might have something important to share with them or whether they might find God there. But there is a desire in so many people, I believe, still today for something spiritual. I don't know what it is for each one. I don't know if we've got it right now in the form that will make sense to them. I don't even know if we are where God wants us to be in order to reach them. I don't know any of that. I do know that we are trying. And in this time of COVID, we are trying all sorts of new things and different ways to reach people and to try to help people make connections with God and with others, find their spiritual side, hopefully in ways that will give them hope in ways that might inspire them to live the life that God wants them to live, to rise up to their full potential. How did Isaiah say it? Rise up with wings like eagles, run and not grow weary, walk and not faint. God needs us to figure out how to do that. I think that's one of our most important roles as a church these days. And I don't mean to force them into our old traditional ways of doing things, no but to find ways for them to connect to God in whatever ways that might happen, in whatever ways that might make sense to them, and then see where that connection might lead. I think there's hope in that. I know there's hope in that. Let's not give up on the hope that is within us, the hope that transformations are still possible. An amazing transformation happened to Sherry DeNovo, street person, homeless runaway college graduate, successful business owner, United Church minister, member of the Ontario Parliament. It's, it's incredible if you think about it. You can't make that stuff up. But God can make that kind of thing happen. I think that God makes that happen all the time. And if we're hopeful, and if we believe, and if we don't give up on the hope that is within us, we might witness one of those transformations, one of those miracles. We might even be asked to take part in bringing one of them about. We might even be one of them. Who knows? Who knows what's possible? Only God knows. Only God knows. But God knows that there is a hope within us that will never die as long as we are willing to keep it alive, to do our part, to find our calling, and to live it out in whatever ways we can. I hope that you discover that hope that God offers in your life, and that you find ways to share it. May God help each of us to make it so. Amen.
Christ has no body now but yours, no hands but yours. Here on this earth, yours is the work to serve with the joy of compassion. No hands but yours to heal the wounded world. No hands but yours to soothe all its suffering. No touch but yours to find the broken hope of the I'm going to offer a prayer for the offerings that continue to come in through PAR, through the mail, and all of the donations of people's time and talents, too. Let us pray. Bless these gifts, O God, as they are offered to you. We offer our gifts in many forms, including our love for you and for one another. Use our gifts, we pray, but use us, too. Help us to continue to find ways to share your love and to bring healing to your world. Through Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen. And let's continue in prayer with our pastoral prayers. Let us pray. God of grace, we come to you knowing that you are present with us. We give you thanks for the gifts of faith and trust which enable us to meet each day as it comes. Be with all those who are facing major milestones or big decisions in their lives, or difficult challenges or changes. Guide them by your Spirit, and may they know that you are with them. We pray for all who are ill, for those at home, in hospital, in care homes. May the suffering know your healing presence. May all be strengthened in mind, body, and spirit. Be with all who are grieving.
comfort the sorrowing with your hope and your love. And may we be a support to all who mourn. God, hear our prayers this morning, especially for Bill, Richard, Lisa, Shirley. We pray for Jeanette, Wendy, Sharon, Helen, Jen, and Bill. We also have prayers for Nancy, Jay, and Dylan and their family as they mourn the loss of Dennis this past week. God, hear these prayers and the others that are in our hearts for all of those in need. May your love and our actions in your name be a blessing to all. All of these things we pray in the name of Jesus, your Son, who taught us to pray with these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I also want to announce that we have another creed being worked on, and it, I think, is being finished up shortly. It may even be ready for next week. Uh, stay tuned for that. Look forward to seeing a fourth version of our United Church Creed with some new faces on it. And now for some older faces, at least ones we're used to seeing. Let's, uh, let's join in, if you want, with our United Church Creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating. Who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new. Who works in us and others by the Spirit. We, we trust, trust in God. God. We are called to be the Church. To celebrate God's presence. To live with respect in creation. To, to love and serve others. others. To seek, to seek justice, justice and resist evil. To proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our, our judge and our, our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. to a world that needs the joy you bring, the hope you share, and the faith you live. And may the grace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, and the Holy Spirit keep you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. 